Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. You are on the right channel, this is a fly and it's a mini snooby. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start with, in the vise I have a Hanak H266, this is at size 10. As you can see, it's a barbed hook and it's on a heavy wire in black nickel. Now this is what I'm using as a stinger. The thread I'm going to be tying with today is the uni thread. It's at 6.0 and as you can see, it's a purple thread. Now first thing I want to do with this is get plenty of wax onto the thread. I need quite a lot of grip with this. So I'm just going to cast on in behind the eye and I want to come maybe down a quarter of an inch. There I can just remove my waist. Okay, the, the cord I'm using for the connection of the stinger to the main fly is just back in, it's uh, fly line back in. And what I've done is I've heavily waxed up a strip and so that I get them all the same size, this strip that I have here, I've measured at seven centimetres. So I know when I tie up the next one, if I cut this at seven centimetres, it's going to be the same as the last snooby I tied. So what I like to do is when I'm doing my snakes, whether they be snoobies or just ordinary snakes, the connection piece goes in at the top. Now the reason for that is that when it comes out the eye, it comes straight out the eye, which I like. Now, I want to put in approximately two centimetres off my cord. And then I can catch that in like so. It is going to wrap around your thread as we go along, so you've just got to live with that. I'm going to come back approximately one centimetre. And then just bend it over. If it's going to come beyond the eye of the hook, you can just take away a tiny little bit. And then you want to bend it back and catch it in going the other way. Now, I always used to worry that when you caught a fish that these would, um, this wouldn't hold, but I've never had that problem, to be fair. It's, uh, it's always held in place. So I'm going to bring my thread back now to where the barb is on the hook. And the zonker I'm going to use is from Comp Candy, who have just brought a range of zonker strips out. This is the uh, pink and black, which I really like for this pattern. They've also got several other different colours. Uh, they're really vibrant, so, you know, pink and orange, uh, yellow and olive. They've, they've got lots of different ones in there. The dyeing is fantastic, really vivid colours. I really, I really like it. So, I've already taken out a strip, and what I'm going to do is just at the end here, I'm going to remove about an eighth of an inch. Just like so. Now, what I used to do with my... Um, my snakes was I'd catch that in with wraps and ties, but I seen something that Steve Cullen does um, with his popper fry, and I think it's much more efficient to tie it in like this. So once you've got your little tag, just bring that to the rear and catch in. your strip of rabbit fur. Just make sure that's well tightened in. Now, you can do what you like with this really, this part. Some people just leave it with thread, but I like to add something. I often add uh, mylar to the ends, or in this case, I'm going to add some hens number 18. So I'll just take a little tiny piece of that off. You don't need much. and then double it onto the thread. The reason I like to use this is it just dubs really easy and it stays quite nice and tight. Just try and keep your uh, 
rab it out your way and then just come up the length of the body. If you need a bit more just add it on. I'm just a little bit shy there. Just a wee bit tight with the materials. And then leave yourself plenty of space at the front and then what you do is you bring your strip over the top and this bit can be a bit of a faff so what you're looking for is where the fur separates so that you can catch it in at this end you can damp it down with your thumb and forefinger it does help a little either side so you can see what you're doing pull it nice and tight over the back there and I like to lock that into place with three turns of thread. Once I've got that three turns in, I can bring this zonker strip all the way back out of my way. I've just caught that in behind my vise there. And then what I'm going to do is get a couple of turns in front before coming in with my whip finish tool. And this can be a bit fiddly or it certainly is for me, not being a whip finish master. Once you've got the whip finish ready to go, just use your thumb and forefinger off your left hand to release that little bit of cable and then cable, sorry, your, your connection strand here that I'm talking about. Once you've got that into place, you can come in and release it. And then just to be safe, I'm going to add a spot of super glue just with my dubbing needle here in at the head. Doesn't take much. Just secure that and make sure that's coming straight out the front. So, so far so good. Now, the bushier your zonker strip is and they don't come much bushier than this, the, the, the more awkward it is to do it, but we seem to have managed okay. So next, I'm going to take this out of the vise and just put it down in front of me. And I'm going to add another hook to the vise now. So this is the H970, it's a barbless hook, but it doesn't really matter. What's the key point of this? So what I want is a really big eye at the front here. And uh, that's why this hook works well. Also, I can decide how much of the shank I want to use. If I want to have a longer body or a shorter body, I've got the options here with this, this uh, long shank. It's a streamer hook. So again, plenty of wax on our thread at this point. Catch it in behind the eye. And you want to again come up about a centimetre. Next, this time with your connection cord, you want to come down from above through the eye and you want about a centimetre of that, just over a centimetre protruding. Catch that in and then bend it back so that you catch it in on the other side. Then come all the way down. Make sure you keep the bit that's connecting, you want to stay on the top of the shank of the hook. So I'll come all the way down with that. And then I'm going to use the same dubbing as I did uh, for the back end. So the purple number 18. and just dub that onto your thread. Like so. Dub's nice and tight there. So just come back to where that ends. And you want to leave quite a bit of room at the front here. So I've got about quarter of an inch back from the eye at this point. Next then, measuring out your 
your Zonker strip or your rabbit strip, should I say. Again, it can be quite confusing, there's a lot going on, but what you don't want to do is have this. So what I mean by that is the cord connecting the back to the front can't be shorter than the, the zonker strip or what you end up with is not the same kind of movement. So pull it out tight and I'm going to just grab it where my dubbing ended off. And I'm going to cut that away. Put that to the side. Then just try and do it on camera. Leave yourself a bit of the skin to catch in at the front here. Again, before you uh, lay it down, just make sure that that's going to fit. That looks good. Just going to trim all that up. And I'm going to get a couple of wraps in to hold that into place. Then I'm going to add a bit more, more wax to my thread. And then I can start laying down a bed of thread where my booby eyes are going to sit. That's looking pretty good. Quite pleased with that. So, uh, the booby eyes, I've already prepared it. If you haven't seen um, how I do prepare my booby eyes, I will stick it up in the bar there, in the Insta bar. Uh, the video does need renewing, I'll be doing that shortly. But uh, it gives you a general idea of how I get this um, little tic-tac type cylinder here. Then, all I do next is catch it on to my thread a couple of turns and then I can wind it up obviously on top of the shank and then cross over in a figure of eight motion three or four turns each And then you can come in front and whip finish. Oh, oh dear, it's all going peep tong. Let's try that again. Okay. And once you've got that finished off, Trim away your waist. Then what I like to do is just come in with a touch of super glue, but I don't like to use the brush on it. So I get my needle, get plenty of glue onto the needle, split the booby eyes, invert the vise, bit more glue. and just glue it at the bottom. Now, I would always leave this to dry, usually. And what I'm gonna do is just leave it to dry now, so you might see a little jump in a minute. Okay, so once that's done, you can come in with, uh, I've got these, they're like a pound from the, the little tool shop, and uh, they're not very good, but they, they do a job for me. And normally I would do this over a bucket, but I'd like to show you on camera. So I'm going to pull it all back and you can see I want to cut it just in behind where I've attached it with the cord. I hope it's in focus and I hope I don't take anyone's eye out. Luckily there's nobody else in the office. And uh, 
I'll need to find that later. But there we go. That's uh, the mini Snooby all done. And uh, this is absolutely lethal. Should even be shown you. It's so deadly. If you can't catch fish with this, you need to give up. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching, folks. Uh, I hope, I hope uh, some of the fly time police are not too offended by this monstrosity. But it does work. It catches fish. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button now. And I'll see you all next time.